Okay, hello, I'm Lucas, this is a bit of late, and I uh, want to do my response to the Q&A that I called for, and uh, that was about a week and a half ago. I meant to do it on Sunday, but I started talking about East of Eden. Anyway, uh, I've got five questions, great questions, so let's start talking about them. Let's start with Hannah's Books, who asked, who are some of your favorite female authors? And that is an excellent question, because I have not really talked too much about female authors on my channel. Uh, it made me realize that I have, um, I have in fact mostly talked about men, <laughs> white men in particular, on the channel. So, uh, you know, it's not exclusively, but I have that you know, that question made me realize, oh, there's not a whole lot of diversity in the things I have I've reviewed for the channel. There is, in terms of what I have read overall in my uh, life, maybe not a whole lot, but some, you know, I've been reading more female authors, more people of color, and all that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, uh, to give a list, uh, definitely Ursula K. Le Guin, uh, fantastic science fiction author. I have talked about her on this channel uh, with the word for world is forest uh, Virginia Woolf who I've talked about with her short stories and Mrs. Dalloway which I could rave on about all day uh, Virginia Woolf is brilliant uh, and then s s uh, some people that I haven't talked about too much uh, or at all I think of course I love Jane Austen the Bronte sisters uh, Willa Cather um, Edith Wharton. I love Edith Wharton. She's probably, oh, I just, I love her so much, so dearly. Um, as for some other people I haven't necessarily talked about too much, uh, or at all. Oh, you know what? Actually, I, I just read a, a book of short essays that had some essays by Cy Montgomery. I think, I feel like I'm crazy right now. I'm, I have the feeling she's not a woman at the moment, but I'm pretty sure she is. I think she is. Uh, I hope she is. Yeah, it said she's a woman. Okay, sorry. I just, my brain just blanked for a second. Um, yeah, I, she's a growing interest for me. I definitely liked that book, and I will be checking out more books by Cy Montgomery. Um, let's see, who else did I write here? Uh, of course, uh, there's some poets that I like who are women. Uh, I don't know too many, if any, uh, modern poets. Uh, but, you know, I like Emily Dickinson and I like uh, Christina Rossetti. And uh, there's a couple other female poets that I mentioned down my, uh, my video for 28 poems for 28 birthdays. Uh, I can't remember who they are at the moment, but I, I, I listed a couple women. For that. Um, I also like Emily Nussbaum. I hope I said her name right. She's a New Yorker uh, contributor. She does like media criticism for movies and TV shows. I think just TV shows because uh, I, I watched her. I read her book, I Like to Watch, uh, which is about uh, her. It's a collection of her essays on uh, TV shows, and I thought it was really great. Uh, Mary Beard wrote a book on Roman history uh, called SPQR Rome, or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but it was my first book that I ever read about Roman history. And I thought that was really great. I, I really loved it. I do wonder if she's written more. Emily Wilson made a translation of... Um, the Odyssey a couple years ago. I think that's her name, Emily Wilson. And that is by far the best one I've read. Uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, Robert, no, no, what is his name? There's another one that's like, it's like 1A, 1B. Uh, Robert Fagels is probably 1B, but Emily Wilson, they focus on different things, but I really love her translation. Uh, and as for another person, uh, I really like DC Fontana, who wrote some Star Trek <laughs> episodes. Um, yeah, so a whole bunch of women went on for five minutes just on that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. 
I will try to talk more about uh, women. Oh, and Toni Morrison. I love Toni Morrison. I've read a couple of her books, not all of them. Not a, not as huge on Beloved as it seems like most people are, but uh, I really love Sula. And yeah, so there's that. I do like Beloved, but I like Sula more. Anyway, uh, Bookish asks, how long have you been in China? A little over two and a half years. Uh, what are some adjustments you've had to make to live in China? The pollution. Winter is atrocious. It is so terrible. Uh, not because of the temperature. That is, is, you know, hardly anything at all. It barely gets to freezing, uh, which is nothing for me. Uh, coming from Iowa, I'm I'm used to the cold. I, I was... <laughs> I have done... I have frozen myself to walk to school uh, in high school like an idiot uh, because I didn't know how to dress for the weather having come from Phoenix, Arizona which is just a terrible place to live uh, if you're looking for weather uh, anyway uh, yeah, been here two and a half years winters, the pollution is a lot worse because you know people, people are very sensitive to the cold here and I just don't get it um, so, you know, more coal gets burned, so the pollution is just where it's also, there's a lot of factories. I don't know about in Shanghai, but their pollution fla fla floats over to Shanghai. Uh, summer is not as bad. There's some really bad days, and they are worse than the winter days because it is hot. <laughs> um, and, you know, okay, well, I'll stay inside and turn on the AC, which is blasting in air from the outside world. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of masks. Not, uh, I bought them before the whole pandemic thing, which has prepared me for the pandemic. Uh, and they are not for, they're for pollution. So that helps. It's kind of, I don't know how much they, how effective they are for, uh, you know, stopping particles coming out, I would imagine, to some extent, but I don't know. Anyway, what has been most surprising about life in China? You can get by, at least in Shanghai, uh, on gestures. Uh, people are pretty friendly here, which shouldn't be surprising. They're friendly people everywhere. Um, yeah, I can speak some Chinese, but I, I just haven't for at least a year. And so I, I really can't speak it. I can kind of understand what people say. Uh, yeah, I need to work on that, but it's a hard, 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 hard language. Conversation is not so bad, but... Um, Reading and writing, which I will probably never have to write. Reading can be helpful, you know, if I ever went to a restaurant again, which I don't plan to. Uh, or, you know, some other reasons it could be useful. Um, I do know a decent amount of characters, so I can sort of get by. But, uh, yeah, you can get, you know, if you ever come to Shanghai, if the world comes back to some semblance of normal, um... Which I, I hope it does, in a way. You know, I hope we move forward in a good way. You know, I don't want... I, I really hope this is a wake-up call that we should change a lot of things. And hopefully we'll make the world a better place. <laughs> is this... Is, is you know, this is like fingers crossed? Is two fingers crossed like bad luck? I don't know. Uh, yeah, you can... If you come to Shanghai, I'll show you around. Great place. I've been outside of Shanghai too. It's also great. You can still get by a little bit. Uh, a little bit harder outside of tier one cities like Shanghai or Beijing, probably. Uh, Codex Cantina asked more questions about China. Why did you move to China? To pay off my student loans. Because I'm from America. And those will never go away. Unless I die or pay them off. Uh, was there something particular that made you interested in other cultures or China specifically? I had a lot of friends in, and roommates uh, in college that were Chinese and they were all wonderful people. Um, and, and co-workers. Uh, all wonderful people. Um, Asian culture is pretty interesting to me in general. Uh, I initially had planned on coming to Korea or maybe even Japan because uh, I thought the pollution wouldn't be as bad. It's not as bad in Japan as 
far as I understand. It is as bad in Korea, because it's closer and it just, you know, flies over. Uh, but, um, that didn't end up happening. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just be there for two years, which has now been longer. Uh, I'll just be there for two years and I'll come back and I'll have paid my debt, which I have not. Uh, but I've paid quite a bit of it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I also have family that's Taiwanese, which if you ask my girlfriend, they are Chinese. If you ask my family, who's married into the family, uh, if they're Chinese, they will say, no, we are Taiwanese. So it's enough about that. Um, all great people. And uh, will you stay abroad forever? I hate America. I love it too. But I hate America. Uh, in many ways, I hope I am always abroad. And yes, I hope that I will stay abroad forever. Uh, not necessarily in China, you know. Mainly because of the pollution. Uh, there are other reasons, but largely the pollution. Uh, today wasn't so bad, but... Oh my god. Um, but I have a sick mother. And I should go back to take care of her. But I do love uh, the work that I do here. I really enjoy working with kids, uh, teaching them English and all that, uh, or English literacy. Uh, so that'll be a hard choice to make. If for whatever reason I can find a way to get a visa to work in, I don't know, Canada, New Zealand, Ireland, the UK, uh, Australia, Maybe, uh, and on top of that, if I could somehow bring my mother over on some kind of visa where I would support her, uh, this all seems very unrealistic, but if I could do all that, uh, I would do that, because I don't want to go back there. Uh, and if you're wondering why, I would like you to look at the leadership and the people that follow that leadership, uh, because they're all disappointing <laughs> to say the absolute least in that uh totally pretentious who goes to the same uh, as a ma as a graduate student goes to the same university that i went to um what are some of your favorite uh films and i wrote one two three four five i could name a whole bunch for you uh and go on endlessly because i have been watching so many films, and I love film. Um, but I will, I'll just name five off the top of my head. Uh, Stalker by, and these are not in any order, Stalker by Andrei Tarkovsky, which is just, it's just so beautiful. There's not, it, this has gone on long enough, so I won't try to describe any of them. Um, but Stalker by Andrei Tarkovsky, uh, In the Mood for Love by Wong Kar Wai, uh, Ikiru by um, uh, Akira Kurosawa. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, the Passion of Joan of Arc by uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, I think he's Danish. Um, Carl Dreyer or something. I, I can't remember. But the Passion of the jo uh, the Passion of Joan of Arc. Oh my God. Of, if any, of any of the movies, watch that one. It is just so dramatic. Uh, and then for a fifth one, it's really difficult to say. I would say probably... Uh, well, the one that comes to mind right now is Manila in the Claws of Light by Lena Braca, which is a Filipino movie. Uh, none of those are American. Uh, they're all Asian cinema in some way, or I guess Andrei Tarkovsky's Russian, or he was a Soviet, so European, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I do love American films too, but uh, I want to keep this list short, and this video has gone on for a very long time, and there's still more questions. Uh, favorite plastic artists? Um, Van Gogh, and... Uh, uh, Edward Hopper, um, 
and Frida Kahlo. Oh gosh, I can't remember names. And um, Georgia O'Keeffe. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there because I I can't think. Uh, because again, I meant to write a list down and not just for films. I was going to name five for each of these. I also asked about, uh, sculptors and I don't know, <laughs> to be honest, anybody that makes like sculpture, I don't, I don't really like sculptures, to be honest. Uh, I do appreciate them, but I would say probably anybody that makes one that looks like a, a real thing. I don't really like sculptures that are like symbolism. Uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, it, it's just boring to me. And, and I wonder, why did you need to make this so big? Anyway. Uh, and I don't like sculptures because I just don't like the idea of digging rock out of the earth. So that you can cut it down and then do whatever with whatever you cut off. Uh, but, you know, sculptures can be... Cool. There are a lot of really amazing ones, but I have no particular sculptors that I like. Uh, and what is your favorite performing art? Uh, professional wrestling. It is uh, dramatic and wonderful and silly. And that is the main thing I love about it. It is completely absurd. And my good friend, Socrates Jones, Sebastian Niles, he asks... Who would win in a fight between William Faulkner and Kurt Vonnegut? And, uh, to be honest, I don't care. But probably William Faulkner would lose and say he won. And Kurt Vonnegut would also lose and say he won. So, who's the real winner? 